AI has been used in game development a lot in recent times. Uh, this ranges from a wide variety of aspects wherein you can either create game art, you can either ask ChatGPT or any AI model to essentially come up with unique game design or you know test out certain mechanics. Uh, you could also use AI to uh, essentially rely on as a as an assistant uh, to essentially help you out um, if you are stuck in any area. So let's take a small look at AI in game development in terms of design aspect, right? Now, when it comes to uh, concept art, a lot of game developers essentially struggle with, uh, you know, extended timelines because concept art is something that uh, takes up a huge chunk of time uh, from an artist to actually come up with the concept art, right? It it can take days or it can take weeks or it can take months. And if you have multiple concept arts that you have to create, then it becomes a huge hassle in terms of managing your overall deadlines and timelines. So nowadays we have got uh, tools like uh, DALI or Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey and similar models, which are essentially transforming how concept art is created. Uh, by inputting descriptive text, artists can generate detailed and varied visual representations and also rapidly explore uh, different artistic concepts and styles. Now, uh, there is one trailing question over here uh, that I think, Vinay, you could also talk a little bit about uh, that a lot of artists are actually scared of AI, right? Uh, so what would you say uh, to these people about, you know, uh, should they be scared of AI or should they consider this as a best friend? Because uh, there are two sides of uh, the coin, right? So Vinay, over to you. What What is your thought on artists and AI? Yeah, uh, thanks, Nikhil. I think this is a very, uh, A, it's a, it is quite a sensitive topic. I understand that and I identify that. And uh, I know as it is, there are, uh, you know, jobs are hard to come by. So people are worried about, uh, does this replace me and stuff. Um, I think um, what I want to say to that is, uh, I personally look at AI as a tool, right? Uh, I don't look at it as something that will replace me uh, because I think all of us are inherently creative. I think I said this before also, and uh, we have visions or ideas in our heads. And the way I look at um, AI uh, using AI to generate these images. To be very honest, these four images were generated using Mid Journey, and uh, you know that's something I'll touch upon later. But uh, without a uh, concept artist, and this is something I did in a matter of uh, five minutes or whatever. Now I knew what I wanted, and one of the prompts for this was, I want a world like Legend of Zelda. I want it to be fantastical. I want to help with ideating on a game, and I spoke to you know Mid Journey and you know gave it a few prompts and came up with this uh, generation, right? And I'm not an artist at all, but I also have experience as a director. Like I have a I have a visual mind, right? So I I believe that AI works as a tool to help uh, you know people like me and others who can kind of realize a, a, the vision. I understand there's a pipeline of uh, okay artists and stuff that is involved, but I don't think this is going to replace uh, those artists, okay? I just think it'll get to a point where artists also use uh, these tools. My, my quick example that I want to touch upon this is uh, when Photoshop was released, right? A lot of people uh, said that's the end of design. You know, they said, how can you have a digital tool that does all this? Uh, if you remember backgrounds, uh, I know, uh, Nikhil, how much you worked on Photoshop or whatever, but we used to manually kind of key out the backgrounds and, you know, remove that. Then context of FL came in and, you know, people are like, oh, this destroys all designers, right? But we're still here today. We're like, in, you know, during this generation and people are still, designers still using Photoshop to just 10x their productivity. And I just want to use that example to say, uh, not to kind of worry and get scared. I would say the people who do get replaced are the ones who won't adapt and use AI in their tool chain, right? So even as an artist, instead of spending hours kind of uh, creating stuff and then feeling like, okay, and your director says, you know, uh, I don't like this flower on the side, what you could do is kind of generate, use AI to generate uh, reference images and take that. Once you get approval for those, then you can start working on those and create your own custom art, right? And I think you should look at it that way. And that's honestly my take on the whole, uh, you know, replacement of uh, the workforce when it comes to AI kind of a thing.
that's a great thought process and a great uh, you know examples that you talked about uh, even i completely agree with you on this part that ai is more of a tool um, back in the day we used to do all the calculations on paper or on hand right uh, then came calculator which essentially got rid of that entire problem for us so uh, i also look at ai as a tool that helps you expedite a lot of things and uh, certainly if someone as a creative mind can identify what looks good and what does not. Uh, I think that still holds a lot of value because AI at the end of the day will get you certain things. It will generate things for you. But whether or not it is good or bad is something that is a conscious decision that a human has to take uh, sitting in front of the screen, right? So th I think that's a great uh, ideology on that part. Uh, extending on this part, uh, it will also enhance uh, creativity and efficiency. Uh, so, uh, you know, something that was going to earlier take you uh, weeks or months, you can get that uh, thing done in a matter of a few minutes, right? Uh, and as Vinay mentioned, uh, you know, he he created this entire uh, concept arts in a matter of few minutes, right? Uh, 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 an artist uh, tra traditionally would have taken anywhere between a few days to maybe a few weeks to essentially come up with this entire scene. And to come up with four uh, such concept arts that would essentially just add up timelines upon timelines. Um, then these AI models can also help you create like uh, character sketches. So, you know, the be beauty of this entire presentation is that this entire presentation is also made using AI. You know, we've, we've kind of used uh, certain prompts to create all these backgrounds that you're seeing, right? Uh, and uh, we just made it in a matter of, I think, uh, how much time did it take, Vinay? Less than uh, less than three days, honestly less speaking, with uh, with my full time job and trying to like you know work on this during the my free time, I don't think it amounted to more than like fifteen hours, uh, you know, full uh, effort, right? And like you said, like even this uh, concept art and stuff normally would take uh, how long? Uh, obviously, you worked with concept artists, right? So, in your estimate, how long has your been experience been when you actually work to generate this the to and fro? Yeah, it it takes minimum of a at least a week if we are lucky but then you know back and forth meetings and all adds up to that timeline so uh, it, it it would i would say anywhere between a week to a month and if you have multiple concept arts to create so you need more manpower and that just adds up to the overall cost structure as well so it it really helps in that direction and concept art is something that you know is used more as an internal reference rather than something that uh, has to be put out right so certainly in that concept art pipeline this ai efficiency uh, helps and fits in perfectly primarily because these are essentially just references that uh, we have to take to come up with the further pipeline of models right so you know uh, coming coming up with character arts uh, or character uh, concept art that helps us get a blueprint at a much faster rate uh, than what a traditional human can. And at the end of the day, of course, there has to be an artist who has a sense of color and, uh, you know, uh, that creativity in their head uh, that will allow us to measure or uh, or judge if the art created is good or not, right? So I think this essentially just enhances the creativity and efficiency that uh, uh, is mentioned over here. As, as mentioned, these AI models act as creative assistants, enabling artists to quickly visualize ideas and iterate designs, right? So it is like having a free or, or a subscription-based intern uh, to, to kind of help you put your ideas to life, right? And this, as I mentioned, as mentioned over here, this this just generally accelerates the entire creative process, allowing more time for refinement and experimentation. Uh, it also helps in generating textures and assets. Uh, so, uh, Vinay, can you take this part? Yeah, sure. So, yeah. So again, as you see, uh, you can also generate various types of assets, right? It doesn't have to be just um, uh, backdrops and all that. This is where the various different models that I touched upon earlier come into play because generating a 3D mesh is not as easy as generating just a 2D image. And these are all evolving fields, but there is some, a lot of uh, very advanced work being going on. Like you can see in the background, this is actually a product that we will kind of touch upon uh, these particular tools that I've kind of uh, given a snapshot on in our paid webinar that's happening on Feb 3rd, uh, where we'll go through all these, how are these assets created? 
as you can see, there are crystals, there are props. So if you've uh, you know done a bit of game design and you're planning to do it, you will be very uh, familiar with you know these these are the kind of uh, hardcore assets that you know you have difficulty creating. And if you can see, uh, these kind of tools are helping you create like very distinctive game art. Uh, once you generate it, it'll be very unique. No two generations are well, you know similar, and that's one of the biggest difficulties actually in AI is to generate two similar images, right? So you also have that uniqueness of creating your asset and knowing that these are not procedurally generated; they are kind of different. And you know, you you also can kind of generate four to five assets at a stretch, and ideate and prototype much quicker. I just want to reiterate uh, what Nikhil also said, right? It's not about uh, you know this is going to replace artists but it gives like a creative director or you know someone uh, even artists a quick way to get reference images before this we used to like kind of google and search and go on to you know i stock photo and then they'll say you have to pay for this and all that headache is basically gone right you get quick images you share it with your art team and then you're basically saying can you please replicate something like this or make this into 3d and create that 